and Vernon, who are uh, going to come down in an integral part of SAS. They're two brothers, Dana and Vernon West. Leslie, let me ask you why they're getting mic'd up. Is Boston the kind of place which young groups can come out of and do well? I think of the cars, I think of human sexual response who are doing very, very well. Is it a good scene to come out it of? It is. It's a really active scene. It's a young town. There's an awful lot going on. I mean, it's not in term, only in terms of nightlife. There's so much in terms of, you know, all aspects of the culture that's happening in Boston. I mean, there's galleries and clubs and places you can go to and be entertained. And there's an awful lot of radio, a lot of good radio in Boston. And these guys are getting airplay. A lot of airplay in the United States from Boston. Do you think a lot of people are coming to Boston, a lot of musicians are coming to Boston just for that all desired airplay? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what's interesting is tomorrow we're going to talk with Tony Chinamo and Ron Delicchiesa, who are two, the two top jazz disc jockeys in town. Tony thinks that there's an oversupply of jazz musicians in Boston. Do you guys think that there's an oversupply of young rock musicians trying to make it? Oh, there's so many beers. That's what's good, because it creates a competitive atmosphere, and then creativity ends up being the uh, main concern. What did you guys come up with this name, Sass, anyway? What's that mean? Well, we had a few other names, but we found out they were used. <laughs> 
Yeah, like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> like what? Can I ask Well, we were going to be Gladys Knight and Pips. <laughs> Somebody was going to be Gladys. Somebody was going to be Gladys. Yeah. I thought of that one. It was a good one. I want to ask one question. How long did you guys have to look for a drummer whose name is Mark Time? Well, <laughs> well the hands of time. We were, we, were, we were really looking for all the hands of time for our drummer. So we found a guy whose name was Mark Time. You're thinking, there it is, the hands of time. One of the things Symbolic. that I was Oops. questioning both Oops. you guys on, Dana and Burnham, is, is that I know the cars are big. I know human or sexual response is big. They both have their, their own special sound. But unless they'd be curious in your opinion on this, the, the latest thing without a doubt is disco. What makes young guys out of Revere or whatever want to get into a rock sound when disco might be the biggest thing to carry you further than the rock you do? Or maybe it isn't. Disco kind of leaves you. Disco is a great sound. It's just, it's become a commodity and it really doesn't leave room for growth. But it's great because it gets people out into the record stores and, and into the scene maybe and to see other groups. It, you know, it, it's good for the industry, but what, what, what's lacking from disco is the uh, the, the ability to grow. I mean, it's just, there it is, disco, and it really can't go any further. It's like a modern twist, since the industry is so much bigger now, uh, it, like a, a fad like a dance fad coming along has totally become even bigger because of the size of the industry, you know? It's sure. become a lifestyle, too. I yeah, mean, you have a well, disco people haircut, like to dance, you know? Shoes. Right. Yeah. What happened to rock and roll is people, uh, the rock and roll musicians started extenuating a lot of the songs and, you know, it became less short and danceable, and now it's getting back to that. Now. But is, is disco too confining for you? Is that what, I, what you're what telling me? Yeah. Sure, but if, if you notice our sound, I mean, we, we don't want to um, sacrifice any of the, you know, musicianship or anything like that, which is, is the problem maybe with a lot of the new wave groups. They've gone away from being good musicians or good players and gone directly to being totally different than anything else. You have to be bad to be good, you know. And yeah. you can really dance dancing. to your songs. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people up there dancing and having a real good time. Do you guys compromise yourselves in any way? You talk about good to dance to. I know you do. You've performed original music stuff. You have written here on the club. You've performed it. Do you compromise yourselves in any way to make sure it's got a good dance beat or something that people would get off to for sure? Well, Vernon and I have always had growing up on rock and roll, and sure. the early rock and roll was danceable. So that's ingrained in us, so it really doesn't matter, you know? It's like the natural fun. If it wasn't fun, I wouldn't play it. Yeah, it's good to it for fun. Yeah. What about the local scene? Um, how difficult has it been for you people to get heard? Uh, Leslie has played you on her uh, Sunday night show. BCN has picked you guys up and done a lot with you. They're great but, to us. But, great. but how do you find, you say it's a terrific Boston music scene in Boston, it's where it's at, but how easy is it to break out of it and really make it big? Very difficult. It's very difficult. Yeah. Still, you have to, you know, have a high caliber of music. You know, and you have to make a good tape. And that's what the record stations will respond to. If you make a good tape and they listen to it, they're very receptive. Don't you think play. also that the more people who are attracted to, say, a hot area like Boston, the more bands who are attracted, the more clubs open themselves up to local bands, the more radio stations are playing them. The chances, now I agree, it's still very competitive and still real difficult, but don't you think that just enlarges the chances of more bands making it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. I mean, Boston more is considered is one of the hardest spots. Yeah. It's a fertile spot, and it's great to be here because, you know, people are really out there to see if you're creative or not. Yeah, and you didn't have to leave home. <laughs> no, I, I grew up with a lot of edge. Because of the quarter. <laughs> what is it that you guys want, ultimately? Money. Money. <laughs> It's not a stance, sir. Are you being realistic? Well, music, Nothing wrong with record that. is not like buying a paint set anymore, you know? It's a different kind, you know, the art, the, the media of music is much more expensive than, let's say, you know, visual arts. You know, visual arts has a certain price. So if you want to record, you have to get up on that caliber of income where you can record, you know? Yeah, we just want the vehicle in order to put out as many albums as possible to as many people as possible. So we all can hear what we're trying to say. Dana and Vernon West, two brothers who are responsible for the group called SAS. They've been knocking us dead all week. They're going to be back with us tomorrow night. We look forward to uh, hearing more from you. Thanks Thank for being you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.